Well, hi there. My name is Senior National Sales Director Brittany Wirt, and I am coming to you um, on a crazy cold day um, in January. And this is a message that has been put on my heart, and I've had a few people ask me um, just if I had anything like this. And um, to be honest, I really hadn't thought about putting a message um, together for um, really for anyone to contain any content like this as far as how to get up and work your business um, in a season of pain, loss, grief, um, disappointment. And so um, I am here and I'm going to be crazy vulnerable um, and authentic with you. And my heart um, goes out to you. I pray that you're not watching this message because you two are going through some stuff. I pray that you're watching this message, if anything, just to equip you um, for the amazing women that God may put in your path that you can be a vessel um, or a blessing to. Because um, as, you know, sisters in Christ and just, you know, sisters in general, especially in our Mary Kay um, community, I truly believe that you know, we get to rally around and support each other um, through just life's ups and downs, right? I truly believe that. So um, so I am here and I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit of my story and um, the title of this training is How to Work Through Complete Devastation, you know, which is crazy, but reality is um, life is not perfect for anyone and we're all just gonna have some stuff. So I have a list of things that I wanna go over in this training um, that I have for you and I want to be timely and I want to make sure that I, if anything, give you hope. Oftentimes I speak, um, you know, at any events and I'm like, I am the national sales director that gives people hope because I truly believe that God looked at me and said, like, this poor girl needs my help and I'm going to, we're going to rally together and we're going to make this happen. And so um, I have been in Mary Kay for next June will be 10 years and I have been a national sales director for three and it's been so glorious. It's been so fun um, and I feel just so incredibly blessed. But I want to share with you guys a little bit of the beginning of my journey because it was far from beautiful. Um, it was um, very messy and um and so I hope this gives you, you know, hope as far as if you can, you know, relate to any of these um, things that I've been through. And this is not at all for me to say, woe is me or look at this crazy life I've had. But to just remind you of that, we we all have seasons, we all have things, we all have things that will happen to us. And it's honestly, it's how we react to them, how we respond um, that will get the most attention and how um, truly which will decide and delegate where we go forward, you know, when that stuff does happen and so my goal is to just give you some pointers of what to do and what not to do you know if you find yourself in a situation of complete devastation loss frustration um you know i started my business really out of the running gate i was a full-time nursing student i'm um, working two full-time jobs i worked since i was 15 my dad was in and out of jail my mom was a single mom um and so i learned my work ethic from her and that is one thing i'm so incredibly grateful for and it was so cool to stand on stage and tell her i'm here because you taught me what hard work looks like and um and i'm so grateful for that so that's honestly something i've carried with me for so incredibly long and um, I will tell you guys I didn't have a lot of support when I started my Mary Kay business um, my mom and I were not on the best of terms when I got started we actually went an entire year without talking um, because of my Mary Kay business and and I'll kind of rewind in here in a little bit and tell you exactly what that was all about. Um, and I didn't have a ton of friends and family support, but I knew I wanted to be successful in my life. And I just saw Mary Kay as a vehicle to put me through nursing school. And so fast forward, and I decided it was actually going to be the vehicle to pay for my wedding. So I started my business in June and I was planning a wedding for the following June and I needed cash. I was a broke college student. And and so um, planning my dream wedding, saved enough money to pay cash for my wedding. It was amazing. And then my new husband came home and said, hey, we're moving to Alabama. And I was like, what? Um, because I was California girl and a city girl, but um, we moved to Alabama and I will tell you guys, there was a season in my business um, where I found myself a little depressed, a little upset. Um, I wanted to blame everyone in the world really as to why I was struggling. I had moved very quickly in my business. I'd earned a Cadillac exactly one year from signing my beauty agreement. Um, I had made, you know, paychecks over $9,000 up into that point. And then I found myself relocated and really frustrated. Um, and really I was frustrated at myself, but you know, it's easy to point the blame at everyone else when you're not where you want to be. <clears throat> And so um, I kind of had to just have a come to Jesus with Jesus and um, realize that God brought me there for a reason. And so I just kind of had to put my hands up and say, okay, God, whatever your plan is, um, let's do this. 
And so fell in love with Alabama, fell in love with the people, the culture, so much of it I just found myself so drawn to. And then um, me and my husband had decided that um, we wanted to potentially start a family and I really wanted to become a national and I wanted to be, you know, grow our national area. And I truly felt like that was going to come from building pockets. And so my husband and I had been to Dallas multiple times to, um, seminar. And so we just kind of prayed about it and God really opened a million doors for us there. We found a beautiful home. Um, he got a dream job where he was making, um, I think like quadruple his pay. We were, he was bringing home about $600 a month um, before this new position. So in Alabama, he made $600 a month. I paid all the bills. I um, paid rent. I paid his car payment. I didn't have a car payment. I drove a free car. Um, I paid the insurance, the cell phones, the everything, y'all. I paid everything. So when people say, you know, how do you make money in Mary Kay? I'm like, how do you not make money in Mary Kay? Because truly, this is how we ate. This is how we ate. This was our bread and our butter. And so when when um, we moved and he applied for a new position and it meant that he was going to make way more money, it was such a blessing. I was just like, praise Jesus. You know, the pressure's off me. We can definitely talk about having kids now um, just because I didn't want that full load on me. And that's just where I was. You know, everybody's situations are different. And um, so I was just so thrilled. I felt like, you know, I was back in the zone, love and life, you know, earned our third pink Cadillac. Things were amazing. And, um, and we were closing on our dream home. So we were renting at the time. We were closing on our dream home exactly two weeks later. And on June 30th, 2014, um, I discovered that my husband was having an affair and, um, and it was soon after that I found out they were having a baby. And it was crazy. It was so crazy. Um, you know, at 27 years, 28 years old, um, we'd been together for 10 years. He was my first love. He was my first everything. Um, he was the only thing I ever knew. And um, my world was shattered. My world was so shattered. You know, I I really didn't know what to do. I had crazy thoughts going through my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to get a job. And you know what? We were closing on our dream home and um, we were renting. And so um, all of that obviously went by the wayside. And I found myself at 28 years old living by myself in a 600 square foot apartment. Um, and with my little chihuahua, you might hear him later. He's running around here. And um, I was just I was in shock. I was in shock. I didn't know what to do. Um, like I said, I had crazy thoughts of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go get a job. And, and you know, I don't want to wear red. Red's not my color. Like I didn't even, you know, like, what am I going to do? I'll get a job at McDonald's. I mean, the craziest thoughts you guys were going through my mind. And one thing I remember is God just whispering in my ear over and over and over and over. I got you. I got you. And, and I had to be reminded and, and God did such a great job of reminding me that Brittany, you would pay the bills for so long. What makes this any different? This is no different. It just means you just got to worry about yourself, you know, and I know that situations happen where there's kids involved and I am so grateful to the Lord that we did not have kids, um, together and it made my depart from that relationship so much easier but I will tell you guys that the choices I made um, in that next season were what propelled me and got me to where I am today. So let me give you guys a little bit of um, history. So I will tell you guys that I've always struggled with my weight. I've always struggled with um, comparison. I'm a twin. And so when you're a twin, I feel like it's a double-edged sword. You've got like a built-in best friend, but you've always got someone to compare to. Or people are always comparing you and you're like, thanks. So, um, so we've always struggled with with that, um, had, had struggled with that. Um, I struggled with my weight. Um, I had put on a lot of weight when I moved to Alabama and I had lost myself. I had lost my confidence. I had lost my joy. Um, but a lot of those things I will tell you, I don't know that I necessarily had those, um, previously. I felt like I grew up in a home where my mom had very little confidence. If any, um, she stayed married to my very unhealthy dad for far too long. Um, and so I truly believe that it's almost a dominant no effect. I really believe that. I believe that the culture that you grow up in, whether you like it or not, can truly become the, the culture that you raise your, your family in or the culture that you choose to put yourself into, you know, year after year. And so, you know, as I was going through this crazy season in my life, um, I will tell you, it was the hardest season of my life. It was the hardest season of my life. I was brokenhearted. I was lost. I was confused. But I will tell you, there's something that gave me so much joy. And that was knowing 
that with God as my business partner, we were going to get through this. It was knowing that God reminded me day after day, Brittany, this is just a chapter of your story. I promise this is not the book. This is not where it ends. You know, and I had to remind myself that God has gotten me this far, not to just get me this far. And it was not a sign that I should not be doing Mary Kay. Mary Kay is not the reason we didn't work out. <laughs> um, it was truly because he had his own issues. But I praise God every day in that season for Mary Kay because I didn't have to go white booties for 12 hours as a nurse. I didn't have to show up in a place where I was going to lose it and fall apart and cry. And there was a lot of tears. There were so many tears. There was a lot of tears at night when it was time for bed. And there was a lot of tears in the shower, which is a crazy place for tears, but lots of tears. And I'm so grateful every single day that I could cry. I could cry if I needed to. And and I didn't have to worry about someone seeing me at my job. I didn't have to worry about, you know, any of that. Like, I got to be my own boss, and I got to worry about me. And I will tell you that in those following six months that I was able to put $20,000 in my savings account. You guys, we didn't have a savings account when I was married. Um, I was married to someone who loved to spend the money faster than it came in, and it felt so good to have complete control over my life. Whether I had kids or not, I would have done the same thing. I truly believe that. Um, it may have taken me a second to figure it out a little bit more, but I will tell you that I knew that God did not get me this far to, like I said, just get me this far. And so um, I will tell you again, I grew up in a home where there was very little confidence as my, um, as my, you know, person that I was watching. My mom, I love her to death. She's my best friend, but it just, it wasn't there. And so I know that I stayed in an unhealthy relationship for far too long because I just didn't have any other examples. But guess what? Mary Kay was what changed my life. Mary Kay is what gave me the confidence to not beg my husband to stay or not choose to stay in a crazy situation or belittle myself or doubt myself or question who I was or whether I was a good wife or whether I was a good spouse or partner or whatever. I knew because of the tools that I had earned in Mary Kay that I deserved better. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful that God taught me so much more in that journey. And I will tell you, the reason I'm sitting here as a senior national sales director is because I went through that pain. I went through that grief. I truly believe um, the journey to the top is coded in some stuff. You know, it might be um, you know, personal stuff that you go through as far as self-confidence or pain or hurt, or it might be family stuff. It might be growth in your business. It might be losing some team members. It could be, it doesn't have to be ugly. Let me tell you, it doesn't have to be ugly. It doesn't have to be painful, but I believe the journey to, um, the top is coded in obstacles, whether it's pain, grief, loss, or discouragement, frustration, um, you know, personal growth and development. It could be a, a number of things, but I truly believe that the journey to the top is coded in that because I think that we have to learn. We have to um, become equipped. We have to, you know, learn the skills that we need to, um, to empower other people. But I'll be honest with you. I wasn't the person that God needed me to be in that season you know, right when I discovered all of that. He had a lot of grooming, a lot of growing, a lot of things that I had to go through. And I will tell you guys, in that season, it was awful. Um, awful in the sense that it's not what I wanted, right? It's not what I expected. It wasn't what I would have picked for myself. Um, but I will tell you that in that season, I had to grow. I grew really cro close to the Lord. I worked out every single day, if not twice a day. I think I lost over 60 pounds. Um, I found me, you know, in the process and in the journey of my marriage, I'd lost myself. I'd put on a ton of weight. My self-confidence was blown um, because of the, you know, positive, negative messages I was getting every single day from my spouse. Um, you know, just so many different things that I knew I would not have developed had I not gone through that process. And, you know, I shared with you guys in the beginning that my mom was not very supportive and, and it's crazy how things work out. But she told me um, literally years later, uh, I think maybe when I debuted, um, that the reason she wasn't so supportive of my Mary Kate business was she was deathly afraid that when my husband, if my husband ever walked out on me, that I wouldn't be able to support myself. And, you know, in the, if I would have thought about that previously, I would have thought that would have never happened to me. Like my, my marriage was perfect. Like everything was perfect. Or so I thought, <clears throat> um, but I was so far from the truth. 
And, you know, and that was my mom's concern that I wouldn't be able to support myself. And, you know, when I debuted as a national sales director and she told me that and she told me, I am so glad you didn't listen to me. I am so grateful you did not listen to me because, you know, look at look at yourself now, you know, and we were able to finish our national area exactly one year from debuting. I'm sorry, exactly one year from um, my divorce being finalized. How crazy is that, that right? Like I had three first line and some second line and the cars were all looking good as a senior. But I had a lot of work to do. Um, but God was working on my heart in the process and on my mind and on my personal growth. And so if I could sit here and tell you that, um, that it was beautiful. <laughs> no, it was far from beautiful, but I will tell you, I would do it all over again. I would do it all over again um, if it meant the same results. And so let me tell you some of the lessons that I learned in the process. Okay, so I have some notes here that I want to make sure to go over because I think that when your vision is cloudy, when you're scared or you're frustrated or you're lost or you don't know what to do or where to go from here, it is hard to find the wisdom and the clarity to get up and fight for what you want and what you know you need. So, okay. So, um, my first topic was when perfect is actually perfectly toxic. Um, you know, when I realized looking back how my marriage was so unhealthy, um, and again, I think a lot of that stemmed from just not having a positive father, um, in my life to know what to expect, you know, in a husband. And so because he was the only person I'd ever known, I didn't realize how unhealthy it was because I didn't have anything to compare it to. And so, you know, reminding yourself of just your value and how much you deserve so much better and to not allow someone to treat you disrespectfully and to love you and to, to honor yourself. And that could be a parent. It could be a child. It could be a friend or a family member. It doesn't have to be a spouse. It can be anybody. But removing the toxic relationships that don't bring you joy, they don't build you up. You know, God had to literally remove some toxic people out of my life for me to step into the greatness that he had designed for me. And, and I didn't see that in the seasons. Um, but gosh, I feel like God was like standing there saying, hello, when are you going to wake up? This is not good. And I finally woke up and realized that I needed to get out. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I realized in that was that I lost myself. I lost myself. I'd put on a ton of weight. Um, I didn't love who I saw in the mirror. My confidence was only in my business. Um, but really how, how much success can you have when you're working your business, but you're not really in love with yourself. You're working at just to check the boxes. I found myself, you know, as I was reflecting on my previous five years before becoming a national, um, I found myself as a box checker. I was just doing the work, expecting the results. Um, and I, I realized that even though I'd earned three pink Cadillacs and all the accolades I had had, I was just checking the box. I was just checking the box. I wasn't authentically joy filled in my life because I just had so much commotion and toxicity. I love the Lord. I loved my life. But looking back, it was not the dream life that I know God had designed for me that I'm living today. Okay. So um, working through the divorce, working through the disappointment, working through the loss, you know, I will tell you guys, um, I never thought I would have to go through that. But I will tell you the one thing I realized is that, listen, you have two options. You can allow this situation to overcome you or you can overcome it. And what I knew is there were some people that had come into my life and caused and disrupted it. And, and my ex-husband disrupted my life. I was not going to let them get the best of me. I was not going to let this situation get the best of me. And so I chose to get up every single day. I worked out. That was the first thing I did every day. I worked out. I prayed. I had my quiet time. Um, I did my devotion. That was a non-negotiable. I only listened to positive music. I only talked to people who brought joy into my life. You know, if I had one of my girlfriends who called me and was like, hey, girl, have you heard from him or, you know, brought up anything that had to do with something that wasn't going to benefit me, I just nipped it in the butt. And I just say, you know, like, thank you so much for caring. But like, that is just not a conversation I care to have, you know, because I knew it wasn't going to take me anywhere positive. It was going to be a downward spiral. I only surrounded myself with successful people. I only surrounded myself with people who loved me um, and cared about me. And I worked on me. I found my joy. I lost, you know, the 60 pounds I'd put on in Alabama. And I chose me every single day through the tears, um, through the shower tears in the morning and at night, through the going to bed tears. Like it existed. And it literally like it's gut wrenching when I think about going through that. It was not easy. It quite frankly is sucked. But I'm so grateful for it because 
in that process, I grew so much. I grew in my faith. I grew in my relationships. Um, I grew in my love for people, um, for offering grace, for just so many things in my life. I grew. I grew in so many avenues of my life. And so I was so grateful for it. I'm so grateful that we get to design our income in Mary Kay. You know, I could have gone and gotten a job and then someone would have told me my value, you know, and gosh, that is not what I needed in that season. I did not need heartbreak, loss, pain, and then someone else saying, this is what I see your worth. That would be awful. I knew my worth. I knew that I served an amazing God who, who had this amazing check for me and this amazing position and this amazing life. And so I knew where my value lied. And that was not in someone else telling me, this is what we're going to pay you. That was not in that season, OK? So I knew getting a job was not was not real. That was not even an option. It was not a reality check. It was not even a plan B because I knew I was cut out for this business. Was I foggy? Was I frustrated? Did I have loss? Did I have chargebacks and, um, you know, like people leaving me in that season? Absolutely. But you know what? I didn't let it get the best of me because I had to remind myself, this is just a chapter, Brittany. This is not the end of the book. This is just a chapter. And so, um, finding yourself, you know, one of the things I will say that I, I realized is that in my marriage, I, I outgrew my husband. Um, he was not a positive person. Um, he did not and could not handle me being more successful. And oftentimes we we grow with our spouse. Well, this particular man, um, he was not someone who desired growth, personal growth and development. And that's why I'm so grateful for this business because it's taught me how to make sure that we are on team, you know, husband and wife when it comes to growth. And if you find yourself growing, grab hold of your husband. It's your job to make sure he grows too. I guess it's not your job, but it's it's your job to make sure that, you know, you are opening him to that. And he's he's aware that growth is an option. You know, in our Mary Kay bubble, we have our meetings, leadership, all that stuff. Most husbands don't have that kind of stuff to get plugged into. So that might be a Bible study. That might be leadership books. That might be exposing him to your CDs, your training to equip him and give him the tools to grow with you, right? He doesn't have to start a business, but you get to share the amazing tools that you've learned in Mary Kay so that your spouse can grow with you um, and not apart. And most marriages do great and they thrive in Mary Kay. Mine, it just didn't. So, um, and so I will tell you guys, one of the hardest things too is becoming a national was the death of a dream. You know, I had worked my business up almost six years um, before we debuted as a national area. And I had always envisioned that that was going to be for me and my husband. And so that was a hard pill to swallow of like, okay, now what? You know, what am I working for? Besides myself, I needed a vision of what that future looked like. And so I went to coaching school and um, they taught us about a symbol. Um, and in that was um, basically when you don't feel like getting up every day, you're frustrated, you're hurt, you've got lost, whatever, um, that you could close your eyes and a symbol would really just kind of get you back into your core zone of where you know you needed to be to get back in your joy zone and get to work. And so I had two. Um, one of my symbols, um, and this literally makes me cry every time, was I knew that God had pulled out some toxic people in my life to put in some positive ones. And that was my sales directors, my beauty consultants, my friends, my family. And so I wanted so badly to know that I was doing my job accurately and they were all gonna be in heaven with me when Jesus came. And so to think about that, you know, I would close my eyes and I'm like, well, what makes me think of heaven? I had to pick a symbol. And I would think of the music notes, you know, that you see on a music book when someone's playing a um, an instrument and they're reading the music note. So I would think of a music note. And so I could close my eyes and I could literally see myself in heaven with Jesus and all my people, my sales directors, my family, my consultants, um, I could see them in heaven because of the mission work that I'm doing um, in my Mary Kay business, because of the, the discipleship that I'm doing every single day by choosing to get up and be exposed to new people and be the leader God created me to be. I am enlarging his kingdom. And that brought me so much joy, which is why our national area is called the Mission National Area. Um, and, and then my second symbol was for, again, I, I shared with you, it was a little foggy in that season of like, what do I do now if I don't, I mean, I, I had a reason to work, it was me, 
but I wanted something that I needed something that would snap me out of that when I didn't feel equipped um, to get up, right? When I was having one of those pity party moments, which was completely um, okay, right? In that season, when you have a pity party, when life is crazy, it's okay to have a pity party, but you got to snap out of it faster, you know, to, to get going. And so my symbol was home. My symbol was at home and I could literally close my eyes and I could smell chocolate chip cookies baking. I could hear my, you know, eight pound chihuahua running around. I could hear the garage door opening. I could hear babies crawling and saying, daddy's home. And my husband walking through the door and our house being filled with peace, our house being filled with peace, with a fireplace and, um, and healthy and health healthy finances. You know, I grew up in a home with very unhealthy finances. Um, and so I could close my eyes, see the house, smell the cookies, hear the dog, the baby's fireplace crackling, all that, and that would get me going, you know? And so whether you're going through life's obstacles right now, it might be in the future, hopefully not. You may lose a parent, you may lose a grandparent, you're gonna have stuff, right? Like we live on a simple planet where you're gonna find some stuff, you're gonna go through stuff. And so having things like this in your tool belt are only going to equip you when you just don't feel like getting up. You know, one of the things, too, that I really am so grateful for is I just trusted the process. I trusted the process. I didn't think about my situation. I tried not to think or put any energy into, like, what the heck is going on? Because it just wasn't my reality. I chose to not live in that reality. I chose to live in a future and the vision that God had for me. And that was becoming a national sales director, finding the man of my dreams and building a family with my new husband and that's the life that i got up for every single day i didn't allow myself to get caught up in the heartbreak or the pain or the loss you know and i i know this sounds kind of crazy i gave myself about six months to work on the pain the grief i went to therapy i went to counseling um you know, worked on me. I found some extracurricular activities. I started country line dancing with a girlfriend to kind of find um, just an outlet to put some time and energy into. I never stopped working my business, had to pay the bills. Remember I told you to put $20,000 in my savings account in that season. Um, I will tell you guys, my production wasn't anything crazy. Um, in that season, I think I went from doing like 6,000, 8,000, 5,000, 7,000, which when you're in a Cadillac, is not what you should be doing. Um, but it was a season of growth. It was a season of working on me. Um, so from July to December, I worked on me. I think we probably had 50,000 wholesale in, but I was joy-filled. I was joy-filled. I was finding me. I was loving me. I was allowing myself to grow in the process and not live in that reality, but live in where I knew God was taking me. And um, the cool thing is I didn't have a car payment in that season because I had so much rollover. So that was awesome. And, you know, you just never know when there might be a season when you can't work or when something might happen. And I never in a million years thought I would ever, ever, ever go through that. But I'm so grateful that I worked so hard for almost six years, up into five years up into that point, because um, I kept getting a great paycheck and I was still working my business. Um, but, you know, obviously my heart wasn't my heart was in just a different turmoil spot. And so I'm so grateful that because of this business, I never had to worry about getting another job. I, I had more money in my bank than I knew what to do with besides save. Um, and I just felt so blessed. I felt, felt so blessed because in that season, God took care of me. And I will tell you the only reason I made it through that season is because of my Mary Kate and because of my Lord Jesus Christ. We partnered up and we made it through that. And I felt like God was always in the passenger seat or maybe even the driver's seat of my pink Cadillac. And I'm like, okay, what are we going to do today? You know, and I felt so on fire with my business. I felt so blessed to have this opportunity in that season of uncertainty because so many women go through that and they don't have that. So many women, I have so many women who approach me at every company event that say, your story is my story and I had to do this or I had to go get a job or, you know, and I'm just like, ah, no, just pour your heart and your soul into your business. The one thing you can control when life gets crazy is your business. The one thing you can control. What do you mean, Brittany? I mean, you can get parties, you can get bookings, you can do your shares, you can do all of that. You can remove yourself out of the reality and put on your Mary Kay beauty coat and you get to control the outcome. And I'm so grateful that I have this business and no one else could tell me my worth or my value because when Brittany put on her beauty coat, 
it was on, it was on. And I was creating my paycheck and I was creating my future. And I did not want anyone, anything, any situation or any circumstances to tell me differently. And I'm so grateful for that. Okay. So I told you guys, you know, in that season, I, you know, I really had to eliminate anything that wasn't aligned with that. So I worked out a ton, found my health, um, Bible study, got real involved with the church. Every Sunday was a non-negotiable, um, you know, just really aligned my life the way it needed to be. Now I will tell you guys, we finished our national area that next year, not because of what I did in that year, but because what I had done the previous six years, I had worked my fanny off. Um, I had done anywhere from 60 to 100 faces every single month. Every single month I was meddling, you guys. And so you can become a national in a year, but when people say, how'd you do it so fast? Um, you know, let's not discount the work I did up until that point. Um, I was doing the work, doing it the Mary Kay way, the heart of Mary Kay, but when your heart um, and your mind and your circumstances aren't where God wants them to be, it doesn't happen yet. And so I had to go through the pain. I had to go through the loss. I had to go through the, the divorce. I had to go through, you know, not having a supportive mom. Why? Because I meet women every day who don't have a supportive mom and I can give them I know wisdom and discernment. And I will tell you guys, my mom is my biggest cheerleader. Um, they moved to Texas um, last, the year before last, maybe I think it was last year, the year before last. And when they moved here, they didn't have anywhere to live. Well, we have three bedrooms upstairs, a theater room, a living room, and they moved and turned one of the bathrooms into a kitchen. They literally had a, an apartment upstairs. Her and my stepdad had an apartment upstairs. I can't tell you how many times she said, I am so glad you did not listen to me. And so in that season, was it hard? Was it painful? Did it hurt? Absolutely. I felt so betrayed. But I will tell you guys that I had to remind myself every day. And every time I started to feel sorry for myself, was like, Brittany, does she pay your bills? Nope. Would you trade her life for your life? And that was a really hard pill to swallow because I absolutely adore my mom, but the answer was no. I wanted to build a dream life for me and my mom. I want to take care of my mom. You know, God forbid anything ever happened. I want to be there to support her. And it made my heart so happy when she moved to Texas and said, where do I live? And I said, you got here. You can live here. They lived here a year, you guys, rent free. Rent free. It felt so good to do that for them. And so fast forward. You know, I'm living in my 900 square foot or 600 square foot apartment. I honestly don't remember. Um, you know, we we worked our tail off. I worked on me. That was that's how we became a national area, you guys. I worked on me, um, and we became a national area. It was amazing. It was exciting. And three months later, I met the man of my dreams, the man I know God designed for me, the man that has helped me grow in my confidence more than you will ever imagine. You know, timid. Um, kind of like obviously insecure, comparison, um, worried about what other people thought Brittany needed this man um, to realize that that's not that's not how you, you choose to live. And, and I guess I shouldn't say needed, but he brought out the best in me in that. He made me realize how much I have to love about myself and not to care what other people think. And so he brought out the best in me when previous relationships had brought out the worst in me and tore me down and made me feel so negative. But I will tell you, I will tell you that if I would have met this man pre, um, let's say right after my divorce and pre us debuting as a national, I would have never attracted him. And the reason I would have never attracted him was because God knew I needed a year of personal growth and development. I would have never attracted him. He is a, he's a very confident man and he needs a confident woman. Um, and he's very successful and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm successful too. I'm so successful. And that was an attractive attribute to him. And that would not have been attracted to him if I would have coming out of a season of crazy loss, pain, grief, he would have been like, whoa, you got some stuff to deal with, right? And so um, I'm so grateful. So grateful for a man that brings out the best in me. I had to kiss a couple toads to find him, right? Um, but I will tell you that the reason God blessed me so much was because I had faith. I had faith in the process. I had faith in him. I didn't put my faith in my bank account balance. I didn't put my faith in my, um, you know, my current situation or my previous marriage. You know, God forbid that would have all been real, you know, scary had I used those as faith, you know, receptors as to how I choose to operate. That would have been scary. There would have been days that would have been really scary. If that's where my faith rested was in monetary things or even, you know, 
earthly things. And I'm so glad that I chose to put my faith in him and in my business. And because of that, this last year we got married and we had our dream wedding, paid cash for that one. Uh, and um, I'm so grateful, so grateful. Um, you know, we're living in our dream home and, you know, it's crazy when I think about it, that the dream home that I used to close my eyes and envision is the dream home that I'm in today. I'm with the fire burning and we got the puppy running around, um, the garage doors. Um, I just picked up my second pink Escalade today, you guys. Oh, so amazing. So amazing. The life this company has allowed me you know in the seasons where i didn't feel like i was good enough or i feel like my life was too messy or i felt like all those nationals are so put together like how could i ever relate or be equipped i will tell you don't worry about that god will get you there he'll do the work um i was a mess I was a mess as a consultant and even as a sales director you know i was able to put on a good front but i was a mess internally and I am so glad that God did the work in me because I did the work in me. And I am a national sales director and I get to live a dream life. We get to travel. Um, you know, my husband, I love taking him on trips. We went on our honeymoon this last year, a three week trip to um, Italy. Mary Kay paid for most of it. And um, if not all of it with my commissions and things. And, and you guys, I will tell you, it's so cool taking a level 10 man on a level 10 trip with his level 10 wife, you know? And so in the process of this journey, yes, I've had the pain, I've had the grief, and I promise you, I will have more. I will have more. I will one day have to probably bury my parents. They will not live forever. I will one day deal with sick children. You know, I will deal with that. And I'm so grateful that I have learned to put my trust and my faith in the Lord. And in the one thing I can control is my business and run. And that's what I'll choose to do when chaos and frustration and pain, you know, when it arrives again, because it will, it will. And so I pray that you never go through any of this. I pray that you never have to go through situations like this, but I want you to know that your business is a thing that you get to run to. You know, so many women struggle and they feel like they can't balance it all. And so they sacrifice the things that bring them joy. Well, in reality, you may not realize it today, but you sacrificing yourself is telling your kids that you're not worth it. It's telling your kids that um, they you know, matter more than you. But reality is when you pick up your starter kit and you choose to go to work every single day, you're teaching your kids the value of hard work, ethic, and getting up even when you get knocked down. That's what you want your kids to see. You want to see what it looks like to get up after getting knocked down. My kids will know nothing other than a pink Cadillac, but I promise you they will see me get up time and time again after loss when I do have kids, you know? And so I share that with you because you have a decision to make. When life happens, are you going to let it overcome you or are you going to overcome it? I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but I'm going to say it's worth it. I'm going to say it's absolutely worth it. And remember, you choosing to be confident is who you choose to raise. You know, you're, you, the, the choices you make every single day to pick up your starter kit is going to be a direct reflection of how your children choose to get up every single day when, when they hit obstacles. I am here because I saw my mom, you know, be a single mom, working three jobs, putting us through private Christian education, not knowing when her husband, if he was ever going to come home or, you know, what jail he might be. I mean, it was awful, y'all. But I saw my mom get up every single day. Um, and I pray none of you ever go through that. But whether it's a cancellation or a zero dollar party or losing a team member or maybe a family member, you know, are you going to choose to get up? Because you choosing to get up every single day is equipping your kids to know they got to get up every single day for themselves and for their future. And who you choose to be every single day is going to define who your children choose to marry and who they choose to emulate you guys. Not to put any pressure on you, but it's, it's real. It's serious. The choices you make every single day will have a direct impact you know, on who your kids choose to emulate, you know? And so I pray that my story of triumph and victory and pain um, can just be, you know, a story of hope for you to know that I pray none of this ever happens to you. But if it does, it can be the absolute biggest blessing. I praise God every single day for that story, for that chapter of my story. I praise God every single day. I would do it all over again because I am so in love with the life that he has blessed me with. I am so in love with who I am in the mirror. And I am a work in progress. I'm not saying I'm the hottest thing or the bee's knees, but I'm a work in progress, but I know that. Um, and I love who I am. 
and I'm loving myself through the journey. And I pray that you don't ever underestimate your self-worth, your value, who you choose to be. If I can sit here and share this message with you as a senior national sales director um, with the successful story that I'm sharing, you can too. And I'll share with you um, my final tip of, of wisdom was from one of my sister sales, our national sales directors. You guys may have heard of her. Um, but ex I think it's elite executive national sales director, Gloria Mayfield Banks. And when I, we hosted our first event, and sorry, Gloria, if I got that title wrong, um, but we were sharing an event together. And, you know, she said, bringing share with me your story is my first event as a national sales director. I was so excited to be standing in her space. I didn't really care who else was in the room. Gloria was there and I'm a national and we're nationals together. And, oh, I was on cloud nine. And, you know, she told me to share with me your story. And so I gave her a clip a quick glimpse of it and she said wow she said you know the difference between sales directors and national sales directors or consultants and national sales directors is we all have stuff we all have stuff we all have crap but reality is the reason a national sales director is a national sales director is because she kept going so her story could be heard she kept going so she could empower other women and be a blessing um, and a story of hope for them to continue going. So we gotta get over our own stories, um, quit carrying that around like a big suitcase that says, you know, I've been divorced or this or that, get rid of the load. And whatever limiting beliefs you're carrying around because God has an amazing story for you. And I can't wait to hear your victory story. Good luck.